All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a weekend, three-day weekend for some of us, if you have a Labor Day tomorrow off. Congratulations there. Uh, latest activity here on the globe, show, or at least on the map here, shows some uh, developing earthquake activity in Southern California within the last hour. We got a swarm of activity again around the Puente Hills Thrust Fault. That's the uh, uh, thrust fault that's made some national news here recently. By the way, it's about 9.39 a.m. Sunday morning, first day of September 2024. There's that earthquake activity coming into the Los Angeles area. It is in that zone that has seen, uh, let me go back here last 30 days, uh, seen a little bit of swarming activity here, including a 4.4 that uh, stirred up a lot of interest here in the Puente Hills Thrust Fault. That thrust fault capable of producing a 7.5 earthquake here every other well, it seems like every couple, every three to 4,000 years, it seems like. At least uh, that's the information I can get. I can't find. That's uh, the other thing I can't find. I even uh, tried to get a hold of Dr. Lucy Jones and a couple other geologists here, but they're all silent. They won't respond to me uh, when it comes to the question, when was the last one out here on the Puente Hills Thrust Fault? Because if that's capable of producing a 7.5 earthquake, that is more uh, of a hazard for Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles area, then say, for example, the 8.1 that's expected along the San Andreas Fault. Even though this is a higher magnitude, this is a less in terms of energy. It's the proximity and the location here of the Thrust Hills, uh, of the uh, Puente Hills Thrust Fault uh, that sits underneath the Los Angeles area that would do a lot more damage than an 8.1 would. Of course, an 8.1, yeah, don't get me wrong, that'd be a, a fairly powerful earthquake and and uh, do a lot of damage down here. But the proximity, local proximity here, a 7.5 directly underneath Los Angeles would be devastating. So it's in that area, uh, this earthquake activity we're seeing right now in the last hour is in that region. Uh, it all, it just kind of kicked up here in the last hour. So we got to keep an eye here on Southern California because Southern California is lighting up like crazy right now. Uh, not only around Los Angeles, but, but also the San Jacinto Fault Zone. One earthquake right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault. One earthquake up here off the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, 1.7. Overall seismic activity on the increase here in the last hour. So it's times of uh, elevated activity here that we need to be on guard. Not a whole lot through the Western Pacific. And I've said this before, when one area is quiet over here, the other area tends to bit, get more active. And right now it's Southern California's turn uh, for the uh, elevated activity. A lot of that is not showing up here on the, the uh, globe. That's because I don't have the uh, magnitude set really you know, down there into the uh, smaller range, but it's there on the map. You'll definitely see it. Got uh, 2.6 from yesterday, 2.7 here um, early this morning so far, and a swarm of activity up here across various areas that we're watching. Watch Bakersfield as well. Normally when uh, things get active in a couple different regions here, like we've been watching over the last few weeks, uh, it will complete this little triangle feature here, or maybe even a little odd shaped uh, square around the Los Angeles area and the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, which is right here. So watch Bakersfield, that should fill in a little bit here. If not, you know, who knows? Today could be the big day. Tomorrow, it could happen in another 20 years. Who knows? We don't know. Nobody has that magic crystal ball of when to predict an earthquake on any given day, any given time, right? Anyone could say, well, in the next 50 years, there's an 80% chance of an earthquake here. Well, yeah, it makes sense, right? Obviously, when it comes to statistics and numbers and possibilities and predictabilities, yeah, percentages right it's common sense there but uh it's times of this elevated earthquake activity here that we've seen recently in the past few weeks and you know it's not only one location it's all around this area and of course the plate boundary sits in the middle of it all the san andreas fault so keep an eye on southern california here it's ramping up in the last hour not only in one location but various areas out here all right further up north uh one earthquake this is the uh outside the Long Valley Super Volcano here. 3.7 coming in early this morning. That uh, outside the Long Valley Super Volcano, but in a couple different fracture zones out here. Uh, it's very close to the, 
Uh, looks like it's north of the 1872 earthquake, a fairly powerful earthquake here on the Owens Valley Fault uh, up here in this area in the, in the uh, volcanic tablelands area. Decent earth earthquake, 3.7, but you know, when you put the picture together, there's various areas that we've been watching here. You know, you can pretty much draw uh, a, a line around the region here, or a circle. Seen a lot of activity here through Nevada recently. That activity followed the movement over here across California here a couple weeks back when we seen that 5.2, 4.4, and a couple other various you know earthquake swarms here. We've seen the inland areas kick up. And that's a sign here, right? It may seem on a large scale distant from the San Andreas Fault to the uh, Nevada area and inland here on the North American plate. But what goes on here? Strain builds here across the plate boundary. You get various areas building up enough steam here to produce a big one on the plate boundary and many other fracture faults out here, all due to the plate boundary. So this is highly strained. Uh, we're seeing inland earthquake activity. <coughs> Excuse me, just something to watch here, folks. I'm trying to get the valley air trying to get used to the valley area once again i spent the day over in fort bragg up here along the coast beautiful blue clear sky well aside from the marine layer but there was no smoke no haze no fog or no uh, smog and uh, i'm adjusting back to the sacramento valley air it's a little hazy if you ever come over the mountains and you look at the valley from a, a couple thousand feet there it's a smog infested area you know and we're breathing all that air down here at least for the folks that live in the sacramento valley goodness another reason to get out of this area uh, but anyway all right let's move on uh, obviously uptick here going on today southern california so watch that closely uh, northern california 2.2 12 miles deep here into uh underneath the area associated with the cascadia subduction zone here we've seen a little bit of trimmer out here recently most of it has been up north a quick glance here at the trimmer map let me show you guys real quick 688 epicenters of trimmer from yesterday notice a little bit here on the southern end of the cascadia uh, that will add further strain and stress other regions out here other fracture faults um, not only at the surface but you got the subduction zone here and the big time up here across the vancouver island range where most of the earthquake act or most of the trimmer activity has been taking place there so We'll continue to watch it. West Coast <clears throat> definitely uh, needs to be on guard out here. 3.5 up in Montana as well. A little odd earthquake way up outside of Helena near Seedley Lake, Montana, it looks like. A couple different fracture zones that sit up here as well. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up, but uh, I bet you that 3.5 did on the graphs. There it is. Showed up pretty nicely. There's the distant 3.5 showing up fairly nicely across the yellowstone seismograph stations in fact all of them it looks like as far as local seismic activity goes though um going to be this right here a couple small spikes this is distant uh, that 3.5 in montana but this here is localized to this seismograph station which is uh um, around the northwest corner of yellowstone national park but uh yeah maybe yeah it looks like that earthquake showed up as well over here that's probably a uh two point Maybe a low grade two. Here's a 3.5 in Montana. Uh, nothing showing up though on the USGS map here in this area. That's an earthquake there from uh, yesterday. Oh, uh, late last night. Oh no, excuse me. <laughs> Early this morning. I'm still adjusting here, folks. Uh, Texas area oil fields getting hit once again. A couple earthquakes out on the east coast as well. At various areas, including a rare 3.8 up into canada this earthquake was felt fairly broadly across the region here let me show you guys the uh did you fill it reports coming in even to some of the states down here in vermont and a portion of upper new york state kind of rare to get a uh, upper three out there uh following that 3.8 it struck two o'clock my time here a.m uh, we've seen a couple other earthquakes here yesterday so kind of following that trail up here across the mountain ranges north american plate here almost always under stress and strain um, from various tectonic forces out here and we do get these little ones out here from time to time nothing uh, like i say nothing big but they can get uh, they can get bigger we've seen historical data there uh quite a few videos back and uh you can get some damaging earthquakes out there across the east coast 
So it's not only the West Coast here we have to worry about. Um, what's this 2.7 coming in now? That's the uh, all right, San Jacinto Fault Zone. All right, far as the bigger picture goes out here, Western Pacific, well, we got a 4.8 coming in right now in the last 20 minutes or so, it looks like, across the um, Vanuatu area. Fairly shallow, 75 kilometers deep there. And a lot of older quakes here across the Western Pacific and adjacent plates from last night and yesterday. Uh, so we'll keep an eye, definitely keep an eye here on the West Coast. Alaska looks like it's warming a little bit up here as well. Uh, they've seen a 4.6 outside the Cook Inlet area near Homer, Alaska, 30 miles deep here into the subduction zone, which is the Aleutian Trench. Um, outside of Anchorage there, about 75 miles or so. Uh, not a big earthquake, but, you know, this is uh, earthquake country up here as well. That's a major subduction zone region. Hawaii, a couple smaller earthquakes out here this morning. Seems like that's getting the squeeze put on it as well. Uh, nothing major. A couple twos and some ones out there for now. Atlantic Ocean, uh, aside from that earthquake this uh, yesterday, 5.4 South Sandwich Trench. We got one more 4.8 up here in the northern mid-Atlantic Ridge. Uh, a uh, rift boundary. Creating some new seafloor out there over time, slowly but surely. We don't want that thing opening up quickly, right? That would, uh, I don't know what that would do. Probably worst case scenario. That thing were to open up, split. Um, let's see here. All right, so yeah, definitely keep an eye here on the Southern California area in general. Goodness, ramping up here today. Uh, we did see a large, long duration M flare. Potentially could have been larger than the M flare from this massive sunspot out here on the eastern limb, southeastern limb. Uh, I told you guys to keep an eye on this area. We got a couple of different active regions coming around the bend here. And goodness, that produced a massive CME. Uh, look at that. This here is from the solarham.com site. There's a flare, a long duration M5.5 flare. It could have been a little bit larger here just because it's uh, in the um, off on the eastern limb here. But look at that massive CME. This is the sun center here in that circle. Huge full halo CME. Uh, had that been earth directed, we'd be looking at uh, some awesome aurora storms here in a couple days. But uh, that is mostly east of us, so I don't think we're going to see any effects of that. Uh, but we'll keep our eyes open here on the forecast. Uh, again, this just occurred this morning. Fairly massive uh, M flare, subsequent CME. It's still flaring out there, it looks like. Look at that. Goodness. So, I don't think... Where's 3811? I don't believe it's 3811. It's another sunspot region that is further out here on the eastern limb. So, you know, there's a, definitely a couple different regions out here that are getting active. Uh, and I think we're going to be entering into a more active period here soon. Uh, once these sunspots get into uh, position here of the Earth. Yeah, see, look at that. That's way out there. Just The sunspot itself is still, I believe, cre uh, just crested on the far side, but just barely coming around uh, the Earth-facing side here. So none of these none of these sunspots are the uh, culprit. Going to be a little bit further out there. Either way, um, yeah, goodness. 10% chance for X flare, 60% chance for M flare, C flare at 99% chance. And um, a real quick glance here at the weather models because I've been uh, looking at this last night and a lot of, a lot in the, it's picking up a lot of curiosity here about a tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico headed towards Louisiana. But if you look now, look at this now compared to last night, uh, that tropical system is back south here again. Last night, it showed a direct impact there on New Orleans, Louisiana area. But today's model, back down south, uh, hitting the uh, Mexico area, well south of Texas. So these weather models that far out are not consistent. We need to be within about maybe about four to five days here to get a little bit more accuracy. This is a ways out. So about September 9th or so. Uh, is when they're forecasting some type of tropical system to jump in uh, and form here in the Gulf of Mexico. 
where it's going to go, we can't accurately predict that for now. Uh, as we get closer, we'll know a more uh, projected path here. But for now, it's a ways out there. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Seismograph stations look calm for now. Uh, again, keep an eye here on California. We're lighting up. And uh, just be prepared. Stay safe out there, and uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this afternoon.